Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the last of our four webinars uh, for the Changing Sceneries, Changing Roles for uh, this year in 2022. Uh, we're very excited uh, with the panel we have today, and I just wanted to thank you all who are probably joining for holidays across uh, lots of Europe and, um, and abroad. But uh, I will turn it over to our our co uh, first thing, my co chair, Jen Wilson, and I say hello, and our colleague, Tim Manders from the Netherlands Institute of Sound and Vision, will be our moderator. So I turn it over to Tim. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Tim Manders from the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision and also uh, uh, part of the MMC Commission. So, welcome uh, everyone to this fourth and last uh, webinar. Um, it's great that you can all attend, even though it's Ascension Day in the some countries where it's a free day. Uh, today we have uh, three presentations uh, on um, uh, metadata gathering and um, yeah, the growing role of technology uh, that can be uh, used uh, by uh, archivists or whatever the name they have nowadays. Um, for instance, uh, by adding on metadata early on in the production uh, chain via a clever system called a thinker list, we have uh, Eric Houters, the CEO of Tinkerlist, and Aaron Neutemans, the head of business development, a uh, guy who talks to all the people that want to use their system. Uh, they will uh, have the first presentation. And afterwards, we have the uh, renowned uh, David Klee, uh, vice president of strategic media solutions of ANI. Uh, a and E, um, um, talking more about uh, media uh, cloud-based uh, solutions. And last but not least, uh, we have Eva Liss Green from um, a tiny island in Sweden. Um, and she's going to take us a bit back into uh, the history of uh, documentalists, archivists, media managers, and what was their role and what could be their role in the future. So I'm very excited to have them all here. Uh, each presentation will take about 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, we will do a Q&A at the end of uh, the session after an, an hour approximately. Um, David Klee might uh, not be there because he has to attend some other important business uh, afterwards, but still, if you have questions for him, please uh, drop them in the Q&A section. Uh, so we will get back to you via the MMC uh, channels uh, with the answers to those questions. Um, and yeah, also for the other speakers, uh, please uh, use the Q&A uh, uh, box. Uh, I understand that also during chatting, some uh, questions can emerge that, and some interesting discussions. Uh, but if you want to move them forward to the end of the session, uh, please also transport them or I will do that sometimes. So, uh, I hope you all enjoy uh, the next uh, presentations and uh, yeah, we will hit it off with Eric Houters and Aaron and Nightmans. So. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tim. Sorry, I was still on mute. Uh, I hope you can all hear me very clearly. Um, so thank you for inviting us. And indeed, you uh, described it very well. Um, what Tinkerlist is, in a sense, is uh, an automatable script and rundown system. Now, how does that pertain to archiving? Well, um, as a scripting and rundown system, we are obviously um, connected to metadata from the start. And we will explain throughout this presentation how that can be used for archiving later. So presenting today is me, Aaron Atmans, as head of develop business development, and Eric Houters. Hi, Eric, who is uh, our founder and CEO. Um, and basically, what I'm going to take a look at today is, first of all, what problem that we set out to solve. So the problem that Tinkerlist sets out to solve is quite simple. Um, what we've noticed in a lot of productions today uh, if they are not using a very uh, thorough workflow uh, and are working in a little bit more traditional way, uh, very often you have a lot of instances that repeat information from a script or uh, just contain text, uh, not a structured way to uh, approaching script building or show building. And we wanted to solve that. So in a traditional way, very often you have a writer's room where you have a blackboard, lots of post-its, people scribbling stuff on uh, a whiteboard. And that information, all these new ideas are then translated to a script, as you can see on the left side, which is then translated to a rundown very often in an Excel sheet or a Google sheet. Uh, then based on the script, you also create cam scripts, presentations, car presentation cards, auto cues, 
And then when it comes, it's time to broadcast all the uh, videos, uh, lower thirds, straps, uh, VTs, you call it, are all put on sticks or drives or uh, retransfers to be put on the relevant software and hardware that do the actual playout. Now, what Tinkerlist aims to do is to create a single point of truth in the form of a script, which contains structured fields where you have to fill out all the information. And then whatever you put in the script is automatically translated to a rundown, CAM script, the presentation cards, the auto queue, and if you want, do the automated playout and uh, via hardware software. Now, all this metadata that's created also allows afterwards to do very easy subtitling, clear the royalties, because when you import videos from a certain source, you know what that source is via Tinkerlist, and also the archiving. Uh, and if you also want it, um, you could also do view rating analysis and other deeper analysis. Now, if we go to the next slide, um, Tinkerlist itself is based on three pillars, content planning, a rundown, and automation. So um, the calendar that we have, um, if you can go to the next one as well, Eric, thank you. Um, the calendar that we have is used from the beginning. So this calendar view actually contains all the ideas that you have for a show. So very often in a, a traditional uh, production, videos are gathered from a wide variety of uh, sources. They're all dumped into a map, but um, the, the people who are creating this production very often think we will create the metadata after the show has aired. But once the show has aired, they forgot to do so. Here in Tinkerlist, we create all these little cards that you can see. Um, so for example, on the Tuesday the 2nd, you can see Amy Schumer. If you upload videos pertaining to Amy, what you will have to enter is who has made the video, what's the source of the video, what do we see in the clip, who is the license holder, is it GDPR compliant, how long may this video be used, etc., etc. That means that all the content that you're going to be using to build your script is already metadata, um, connected to metadata from the start. Now, um, what we essentially do um, is take all the stuff from that calendar and put that into a script. And that brings me to the next part, scripting in a rundown. The script that we have built is the beating heart of Tinkerlist. It's uh, completely cloud-based, so you don't have to install anything. And it's completely collaborative. So hundreds of people can work in a script at the same time. And we know from each person who they are. So we also know who is um, uploading what, who is altering what text. And the beauty is that we essentially create templates for a show, including all the fields for metadata. So again, if you upload a video, so in this particular GIF, you see a clip, for example, one that is uploaded by someone, he has to enter who created the video, who is the subject, uh, what is it shown, what is the file type. and Obviously, we also track all the rest, the creation, the time it was uploaded, and we keep history of all changes in the script. So you can revert whenever you want to. Uh, in other rundowns, you are very often, you are free to enter textual information, but it's just that, it's just text. With us, it's all locked in special fields, different cards, and structure, making export and import very easy. Now, this script, automatically folds down into a rundown. This is the rundown. So whatever you alter into the, uh, the script is automatically translated to an up-to-date rundown. Now, uh, the beauty of this rundown as well is that you can uh, click on any row, open it, and it will show you a preview of what's coming up. Because we also use this rundown, that also means if later you want to overlay, for example, a view rating analysis, we know at exact what time, what moment something is broadcasted because we have the rundown and we can we can connect that to, for example, view rating analysis. So if view ratings take a plunge, we know what video or what segment was playing at that time. Now, if we go to the next part as well, uh, we can also connect RSS feeds. So we cannot only create a metadata into the script, we can also create fields into Tinkerlist so that when we import data from another source, an RSS feed, Associated Press, Thomson Reuters, when we pull data from that source, it's automatically filled out in Tinkerlist with the correct information. So when you have to clear royalties afterwards, it's very easy. The connection has been set up with these type of newswires. Now, furthermore, 
uh, thinker list as uh, it can be used by creative writers, by designers, producers, presenters. And we also know of every user in Tinkerlist what their exact role is and what their name is. So we know of everyone what they've uploaded, what they've changed, um, what, how they use Tinkerlist. So for example, writers, we see more into the script while we see uh, cameramen more into the rundown. Um, and it also allows us to do further and deeper analysis on how different people who work in broadcast are using scripting and rundowns. If we go on the next one, now this is where I'll do the handoff to Eric, uh, because he can obviously give a little bit more explanation on what other types of metadata that we can use, generate, and that you guys can use for automatic archive. Take it away, Eric. All right, thank you, Aaron. Um, so I used to be a studio director and um, I experienced this issue a lot, so uh, creating metadata. Uh, typically, we used uh, a multitude of Excels where we need to, needed to provide the metadata for a show that would be then later uh, ingested in um, Mediagenics um, Watson, for example. Um, but uh, during the show, uh, there was no time to write all this metadata down uh, in, the, in these Excels. So, uh, as Aaron mentioned, we ended up doing it the day after. And then, of course, we had forgotten everything. Um, so it was a lot of work for some people to gather all this information. So the idea um, we have is, um, as Aaron explains, that we capture the media from the moment it is created so that people don't have to use another tool um, to, um, to, to fill this metadata because it's really, yeah, it's, if, you, if, you, if, if it's too hard then, uh, and, and, and too painful, then they probably don't do it or uh, they do it later or never. Um, and, and the cool thing is also um, if they want to show um, a strap, a name strap of, of a person, then they need to put it in the system. Otherwise, it doesn't show up in the automation. So, um, so they, they also have a bit to create this metadata. Otherwise, um, their show will not work. Um, and then uh, by adding some extra metadata fields to, um, to, to the cards that Aaron explained, um, we, they, they, have, they, they don't need to uh, leave the platform uh, in, and don't have to go to another system to uh, provide this information. So yeah, we capt capture all types of, um, of, of, um, yeah, of information um, within these cards. Um, uh, for example, yeah, who contributes, as Arn mentioned, who's working on what, um, who's present in the show and when. Um, um, thanks to the, the, the queuing, we also know from what time to what time a certain person was uh, present in the show. We also know the collaborators uh, to the show, the right holders, um, when, it, when it airs, when it's created. Um, also for stills and media, uh, we provide the right fields. Um, and also a cool thing is if they upload uh, um, photos or clips we, uh, and they're coming from the internet, we keep where it's coming from so it's easier for them to, um, to clear the rights. Um, and as I mentioned, they can also add uh, uh, custom metadata, uh, for example, GDPR uh, things or whether they can reuse media later, uh, yes or no, all these things. Um, an important thing in our platform is the automation. Um, so we are um, integrated with a lot of technical parties uh, in, in studio. We have a lot of partnerships also with EVS, uh, Gross Valley and so on. Um, and um, the idea is that um, we, we have a separate app that, um, that displays all the information um, of the rundown as, uh, as triggers. And this, this, platform, this system downloads automatically all the media in, onto the right device in studio and then it triggers these devices. So all the name straps, all the, all the fields that they've provided in a rundown are then automated towards uh, the, um, the automation. Um, we have an open API and we also have Active Directory, so that's important because then um, we, 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 we have the right names and uh, the right people connected to our platform. So Active Directory, that means that the, the company itself is responsible for the user management uh, in our platform, so uh, they don't rely on our user management. And uh, the open API allows for view rating analysis, a couple of broadcasters in Holland do that. Um, so they, they are able to correlate the content in the rundown to the view ratings and learn from that. And automatic archiving, as we will describe a uh, use case uh, at, uh, at VRT, the national broadcaster here in Belgium. So the, uh, the, there was a developer and he created a, a, 
a script that interacts with our API and automatically archives towards their archiving system. Um, he made it so that they, he can choose uh, what episodes to archive or it was also possible, it's also possible to automatically archive all the episodes that are created during the day at night and then connect it to, um, to their um, um, MUM system or um, um, yeah, metadata um, archiving system, sorry. Um, and that means that um, if everything is nicely ingested, then it's also uh, searchable. Um, we have, all the texts are provided so they can easily find um, what they've done in the past. And the workflow was, um, so um, the script is created by the producers. Uh, it's broadcasted, at night it's archived um, and with all the metadata. And then later they can search easily on the metadata that, that, that is automatically created um, um, from, from the rundown and they can reuse it because they, they can re reuse it in our own platform because then they can retrieve things and then reuse it in our platform. Um, so that's a bit the schema. So the, 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 the basic is the, the, yeah, the, the single point of truth is a, a content item in the rundown. It can be fed by a lot of uh, yeah, third parties like RSS feeds, MUM systems, archiving systems, the socials, content that's coming from the web media. Uh, that all goes into one item, it's broadcasted and, um, and then it can pilot automation, the auto queue for example, uh, the archiving system, uh, view rating analysis and so on and so on. Um, we, um, I saw there was already a question about what types of uh, things we do. So uh, we're mostly used for uh, live shows, so daily talk shows, panel shows, sports, esports, um, uh, online news, a lot of online news, radio news, uh, also more and more news. Uh, so we go from VRT over NPO, DPG Media, SBS, Benny J, and also Built and Geluid in Holland, uh, where our friendly host Tim is uh, working. Um, so that was a brief introduction of uh, our use case at VRT. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you want to know more, you can uh, contact us um, easily via email. Um, and we are also happy to answer some uh, questions, I believe, after the sessions. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, um, uh, Eric and Aaron. Um, yeah, as, a, as an archivist dealing with lots of uh, different systems and the metadata truths, uh, it sounds like paradise, a single point of uh, truth. Uh, so I have many questions myself, and there are some posted in the Q&A, but we will park them indeed for uh, uh, after. Uh, So um, we gladly uh, talk to you more after.